Hey, welcome to the Gentle Rebel podcast. This is about navigating life's harsher edges with a spirit of compassionate creativity. I'm Andy Mort. I'm a sound artist, songwriter and slow coach. And I love poking and unpeeling the potential of gentleness in everyday life. Gentleness that stands with a firm back and a soft front, courageous and aware, patient and abundant, not forcing what needs to grow or rushing the things that require time. In this episode, we're going to think about ritual, repetition and our insatiable drive for novelty. We've been exploring the theme of tranquility in the Haven recently. It's a topic I love when it comes round every June. Breathe new life into old and familiar spaces. Tranquility takes us towards doorways, thresholds and the space between the noise. This is the threshold between the hustle of the world out there and the stillness within. Acceptance. Silence. Pause. Creative repetition and ritual is an anchor in time. And home is the embrace of becoming what is. I'd love to share some of the ideas in this episode uh, from our recent conversation in the Haven Cotter on the theme of tranquility and specifically of these ideas around ritual, repetition uh, and novelty. Since reading Byung-Chul Han's book, The Disappearance of Ritual, its ideas have been sloshing around in my mind. In it, Han writes, Today, time lacks a solid structure. It's not a house, but an erratic stream. It disintegrates into a mere sequence of point-like presences. It rushes off. There is nothing to provide time with any hold. Time that rushes off is not habitable. I don't know about you, but I feel this. It resonates. The slippery slope, a sense of time rushing through my fingers like uncontained water. Rituals serve a purpose. To give us a different experience of time. A non-linear sense of home. The folded page moments that we experience when coming home to a good friend, a familiar place or a meaningful hobby when it's like no time has passed between visits. The timeline folds in on itself and this moment becomes all moments. The past becomes the present. Han describes rituals as symbolic techniques of making oneself at home in the world. They transform being in the world into being at home. They turn the world into a reliable place. They are to time what a home is to space. They render time habitable and even make time accessible like a house. Rituals are symbolic acts. They represent and pass on the values and orders on which a community is based. They bring forth a community without communication. Today, however, communication without community prevails. Community without communication is about sharing something that transcends our ability to articulate or describe it through language. Rituals provide the experience of meaning through action rather than prescribed and defined meaning by discourse. Life doesn't need to be understood for it to be meaningful.
Rituals provide rhythm and repetition that give us home in time without the need to explain. In fact, to explain is to restrict, to possess, to destroy. This is the compulsion of communication without community. To analyse without knowing, to describe without feeling, to elevate oneself and assume knowledge that can't be possessed. This compulsion replaces the mystery, the magic, the enchantment of life with discourse, description and definition. In the modern world, it tells us it's not enough to experience things as meaningful. We must understand what they are, where they came from and who chose them to ensure that everything in art, ritual and ceremony is stripped of its playful, creative and poetic excesses. Rituals are repetitive. Rituals are mindful. Rituals carry a formula, an order, with structure and sequence. Rituals are intentional. They are tracks for us to wander, a familiar pathway in an uncertain and ever-changing world. Rituals open the door with open-handed expectancy for unexpected detours so we can find ourselves lost. This isn't entitlement to outcome or product. Its success is not measured by some kind of result. Rituals don't use the language of success and failure. They are not value judgments. They are not something to get through and get done. Rituals are like music, like dance, like a dinner with friends. Time is different here. It's about the motions through which we go, not the place we end up. Time is different here. It's about the motions through which we go, not the place. Time is different. Time is different. Time is different. A habit is different from a ritual because it's mindless. Once established, it occurs without thought, without intention. It contributes to a chain of events that leads to a particular outcome. Habits are about getting things done. A ritual is different from a habit because it is mindful. It isn't about an outcome or getting things done. It's an invitation for life to relate to life in the here and now. To let go of the rat race, the striving, the efficiency, the productivity, the hustle, the pace, the need to get away from here. The ritual cannot happen anywhere but here. Rituals are enjoyed by individuals loved ones, families, social groups and communities, when attention turns toward
Repetition isn't about sameness. It's not replication, duplication or recollection. Repetition knows that this moment will never happen again. That recollection of the joy we've just experienced isn't the same as the joy of the experience. Repetition lets go of the desire to bring back, to control, to cling to. It's the whirlpool through which the water flows. A definite form that we can describe as a whirlpool, but forever different because the water is never the same. We might live life as if trying to catch the water downstream and force it back into the whirlpool where it once flowed. It reminds us of a beautiful day when the sun sat perfectly on the horizon. And we focus our attention on what was but no longer is. And we fail to notice and enjoy the fresh water that keeps flowing through in the here and now. We might say we should do this again as we say goodbye at the end of a memory. What is it we should do again? How will this folded page moment allow for the fresh flow? To let go of what was and to enjoy what is. Repetition is a permanent lingering in the present. It enters the space where the past occurred, but it doesn't attempt to repeat what was. It is repeating what is. The ritual cannot happen anywhere but now. What is will become what was. What is will become what was. Ritual is different from routine. Newness and excitement becomes routine, the pursuit of novelty, of difference, of experience, chasing, searching, longing for the thing that is going to satisfy the unscratchable itch. Except it doesn't. We might think of a sunset as the novelty. It's an event which, when complete, cannot be repeated, only recollected. The quest for novelty is the desire to see, to capture, to possess more and more amazing sunsets. But it doesn't fill us up. It doesn't do what we hope. In fact, it only seems to make the sense of incompleteness and lack even bigger and ever more dispiriting. Ritual is the path from which the sunset was enjoyed. The path can be repeated. It can be followed again. It will bring myriad ways to encounter and enjoy the world. You do not grow tired of the path. The person expecting novelty and excitement overlooks what is already there. They want stimulation, but stimulation quickly becomes routine and boring. They become desensitised and it needs more and more to keep it fired. This is why even when we have enough, we do not have enough. When we repeat the path, we can prepare ourselves for what might be, like the faithful supporter who attends every game that their team plays. The games might blend together, but some stand out, significant, meaningful, wondrous. Stories to tell, to enjoy, to entertain. The sunset that can be recollected but not repeated. I was there. I am there. Folded page moments. I take my seat on the path again, expectant and uncertain. The modern world often fears the ordinary. It demands an escape from routine and the mind-numbing emptiness of repetition. Its answer is to consume. An endless stream of new things, the latest advances. New stimulation and experiences... It's the feeling of emptiness which spurs communication and consumption and it's communication and consumption which spurs the feeling of emptiness. Without ritual, we are left forever checking the inbox, waiting for a new distraction, a new promise 
to take us away from here, to take us away from now. The erosion of public space, both in the physical world and in our collective consciousness, coincides with the proliferation of events. Events that have taken the place of festival, that are characterised by performance and consumption, to be entertained and spoon-fed, where we might think of the festival as coming together in contribution and collaboration. Like rituals, they are pathways that open the door to possibility, rather than stages that deliver a pre-rehearsed presentation. The festival follows structures and sequences without being contrived or prescriptive in its agenda. We are involved in festival. We are heard. We participate, not as consumers or stakeholders, but as dancers, as musicians, as writers. Creating alongside one another moving with the path in the here and now, flowing through the moment, expectant and uncertain, repeating the folded page, excessive, wasteful, unproductive, beautiful. Creative repetition is very different from productive repetition. The artist is not a content creator on the production line. She's a conduit, beyond time, dancing with her medium to express some truth she glimpses as it glances back into her. She doesn't seek to possess truth. She isn't determined to discover the secret or the meaning when there is none. She dances with the mystery. To the rhythm of inner rest, of space, of silence, of stillness. We can engage with rituals in everyday life, and it begins in this place, the rest, the stillness, the silence. Letting go of the compulsion to perform, to communicate, to consume, allowing life to grow from the inside out, through simple things, a cup of tea in the morning, writing in the journal, walking in the neighbourhood, sitting down to dinner, the sauna at the end of the day, the shower at the start of the day. Rituals might be shared with others. They might be done alone. They are doorways of expectancy without expectation, demand or pressure. They rebel against the urge to produce. They help us waste time in the most beautiful ways. Like rest, rituals are not transactional or linear. They connect the past with the present. The future folds back to this moment when it feels like no time has passed. Not because time is slipping away, slipping through our fingers, but because time means something else entirely. I've just finished creating my Fireside Rest program where I support people who feel like weary travellers, tired, overwhelmed, numb to certain things that maybe used to bring you joy. 
We use stories, poetry, music and creative prompts to play together uh, and give your mind and body space to return to its natural places of rest. Many of us resist rest because we are exhausted and have been taught to believe that we should be making better use of our time. Maybe we've not considered what restful rhythms and healthy habits would look like and make possible in our lives. This program is built on the ideas I've been talking about in this episode, uh, the call to ritual and non-productive pathways as a foundation for the rhythms that bring us home in time. I was inspired by that quote I started with today from Byung Chul Han. Today, time lacks a solid structure. It's not a house, but an erratic stream. It disintegrates into a mere sequence of point-like presences. It rushes off. There is nothing to provide time with any hold. Time that rushes off is not habitable. So how can we use ritual as symbolic techniques of making ourselves at home in the world? Transforming being in the world into being at home. Turning the world into a reliable place. Rituals, as Han says, are to time what a home is to space, rendering time habitable. Making time accessible, somewhere to exist. Sandra Dalton-Smith says our bodies cannot fully function when they're in a constant fight for excellence, high performance, maximum effectiveness and optimal capacity. And yet, that is where so many of us are in the modern world. And so this program is for you if you find yourself in a constant state of urgency and reactivity or panic mode. Maybe you're existing in a state of functional numbness. You might be operational, but you've kind of lost touch with what's alive in you, with your desires, with your emotions. Maybe you're experiencing chronic exhaustion and overwhelm, recovering from burnout. If any of that rings true, then I want to invite you to rest at the fireside with me. The fireside spirals, the coaching spirals that I use uh, are designed to help you slow down, to listen within and to connect with your needs beneath the noise. I aim to make our conversations a tranquil anchor in your schedule. We can explore your favourite music, stories and art that will inspire your natural sound and creative spirit and that return to those natural rhythms of who you are beneath the noise. So you can find out more through the link in the show notes or go to the-haven.co forward slash fireside. All right, well, I will be back again soon with another episode of the Gentle Rebel podcast. Until then, remember that even when it appears not to be, gentleness with a firm back and a soft front is always an option. All right, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.